In today's video, I want to share some of the pictures from my trip down to San Diego to finally get to meet Debbie Beard with Debbie's Design Diary and Sally and Josie with IOD for Debbie's Vita Flora paint and lay reveal and show you what I did with the big vintage suitcase I got at Kobe's Swap Meet. I was able to meet and hang out with some of the nicest and most creative people in the business and I really just had so much fun. We spent two days hanging out and making friends and sharing about our businesses. I really couldn't have asked for a better time. Really, it was just an adventure that I won't forget. We got down there a day early, so we got to hang out with Debbie and her family and some of the retailers and just help her get set up. It was really fun and Debbie really made it special for all of us. We got to go out to dinner together that night and that was really nice too. I really think creative people just automatically really just bond very easily and it seemed like we were just all old friends that have always known each other. Is it heavy? Okay, do that again. <laughs> When we got the suitcase back to the shop, we decided to tear off the laminate that was over the wood. It was all torn up. I was gonna do something different, but we just decided to rip it off. On Friday, Debbie, Sally, and Josie did a paint inlay tutorial for us. Um, that was pretty fun and I learned some new tips and tricks. And then we just went and hung out at the beach for a little bit. I decided to decoupage some paper to the suitcase that I found and I'm using Big Top here and putting a layer of the Big Top and then putting the decoupage paper down. This decoupage paper is called Katarina and it is one of the Grace on Design papers which they are out of business but I do think that somebody else might carry them. If I can figure out who I will put it in my description box. I wasn't liking how the brayer was working because the suitcase isn't really flat. So I switched over to an old gift card and that really helped. That made it go on a lot easier and I was able to flatten out the bubbles a lot better. You just really have to be patient and gentle with the paper and, but kind of firm. And if, as long as you make sure that you've got enough varnish under the paper, you don't really have to worry about the bubbles because I can show you what to do to get those bubbles completely out of there. This piece turned out super flat and perfect, but it didn't look like it was going to. So you just have to trust the process and not get scared of it. As you can see, I do decoupage paper in sections. So I put my varnish down in probably like a six inch section all the way across, then lay the paper down and flatten it out with a card. And believe me, when I'm done, it will be really, really flat with absolutely no wrinkles. This is Debbie's house. It feels a little bit surreal being here, but it's just so cute. Look how cute it is. Everything but it's just been a hard and arduous thing. When I look back upon the life I Decoupage paper will usually flatten out on its own while it's drying, but I really uh, just get too impatient. So I always take a heat gun 
and just lightly go over it and that will flatten out the bubbles. What it does is it will reconstitute the varnish behind it, like reactivate it, and then it will melt the paper onto the varnish. And so if you're a little bit worried about it not coming out right, you can do that. Then I took a 220 grit sandpaper and sand it around the edges to get all the excess paper off around the little nail heads. I was going to decoupage over the nail heads, but thought that looked like it was just really gonna be a huge pain. Here I see that I'm going to have to add a little bit more varnish underneath, which is no big deal at all. And so as soon as I'm done sanding, I will go back and add some more varnish underneath the corners. I'm just going to peel up these edges and put some big top underneath and flatten it back down with my little gift card. Lately, I've been questioning my own path. Who knows how long it will last or where it will go. Now I take one step back and I watch what's going on and I release the need. With a broken heart and mind and arms laid down You're warm hate and arms left in the light of day And let Jesus show the way But hey, I'm not the religious and I'm old Since I can't stand the way that most priests talk In the state church or elsewhere In doing the collaboration and thinking about who would we want to work with for our first collaborations and or brand collaborations and uh, and when she said yes we were so thrilled and she of course is a very close friend of ours um, so we have a lot that ties us together and we have a lot in common even beyond design and brands and business um, that is very special and dear and so just having somebody like Debbie who you can fully 100% like, trust and know that everything's gonna work well. Um, and it's been, as far as the design dream, I'm gonna talk, let Josie talk about that because she has kind of a funny take on, on what that, that process was like. For me, it was easy, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it was. It was <laughs> Debbie was a breeze to work with, and uh -huh. we immediately loved the direction of her vision, especially because it came from her heritage and the heart of her family, and mm -hmm. so that was immediately, oh, we loved it. Um, one thing is, you know, Debbie doesn't like bright colors that much, <laughs> right? <laughs> and I tend to be a little more <laughs> muted in my color selection. And so when we were getting down to the palette, Debbie's like, I like this palette. And I'm like, oh, I really like that. What if we toned this one down? <laughs> and kind of, and so we had back and forth, you know, she sent it. I'm like, oh, you know, I feel like if we take this orange and make it kind of more like a persimmon orange <laughs> rather than a neon orange. <laughs> and that's she's brown. like, that's, yeah. exactly, that's brown. And so I'm like, okay, because ultimately we wanted this to be Debbie's baby. And yeah. I'm like, no, I want, I want her palette to be her palette. And I'm so glad we did because it's perfect. It's perfect. And we're so excited yeah. and we know that you guys are gonna love it as well. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so and I have to thank Debbie because I am always pushing her to go a little bit brighter. So now that she's worked with <laughs> Debbie, the I'm gonna seem like a breed. No brown. No brown. <laughs> you want to ground it, you 
can I like to use yeah. the neutral colors as the base. Um, and it's and we have samples here. We have them all right inside, along with all the IOD. It's an IOD candy store in there. So come on in. Are you having fun? No. Sucks. The things I do for love. If you find that you still have a little bit of bubbling underneath your paper, which hardly ever happens, but if it does, you can take an X-Acto knife and just cut it open and stick some varnish underneath, just like this with a small paintbrush and flatten it back down and no one will ever know. This is the cute outdoor area where Debbie does workshops, and this is where we held our workshop. It's just so bright and so Debbie. I decided to decoupage the back of the suitcase with Recycle Treasures paper. This one is called TikTok, and it has clocks all over it, and I think it goes perfectly with Katarina the Time Traveler but it was a little bit shorter, so I did end up having to blend in part of it, but that's one of my favorite things to do. So I did not mind doing that at all. I did decide to wet down the paper before I put it on the suitcase so you can see that it's a little bit wet. I spritzed it with water and that will open up the fibers so that you get less wrinkles. So I highly suggest that you do that. It won't hurt the paper, it will just help you get a flatter surface. So just spray it with a mister bottle and lay it down over your varnish. It's easy to forget, but I didn't go all the way out to the edge of the paper. I just made sure I went through the yeah design. Me, what colors I used to blend the decoupage paper in because I really don't know. It was just a mishmash of a bunch of different colors that I mixed together. You just kind of have to play with colors and see if you can find a good match. I did put a base coat on this and I think it matched pretty well. Then I decided to go over it with some dark and decrepit liquid patina to try and match the other side, which I think it looks really good when it's done. So I pounced in the liquid patina with a chip brush and then as it dried I just feathered it out and blended it in and I think it looks pretty good.
I didn't show it here, but once it was completely dry, I sealed the whole entire thing with a couple coats of Big Top. And there you have it. I think it looks pretty dang good. On Saturday at the Public Reveal, we had a bunch of retailers and customers come in and we did a little workshop and just played with the products and had a lot of fun. I just want to say thank you, Debbie, for inviting me to come down and to Josie and Sally for coming down and meeting with us. And if you want to see the video where I created a dresser with the inlay um, it's in my channel so you can just go find it there I'll put it in the description box I really miss these girls I want to see them again so bad we had so much fun to find the products that I used in this video I'll have them down in my description box. If you're local to Spokane, stop by and see us. Action! Are you going to subscribe over in the... Wait, what? Say it again. Do it again. It's okay. Um, do another subscribe for the left. And then leave a thumbs up.